This pattern will be uh, primarily a turning exercise on the lathe. I use my metal lathe for wood. And uh, that's why I made it out of maple. I'm, I'm making this pattern out of maple because uh, maple turns so beautifully on a lathe. It's just so hard and nice and it doesn't splinter. However, it's not really very easy to work by hand as evidenced here by all of the burn marks. I started with a nice sharp bandsaw blade, but I don't believe it's very sharp now. So don't criticize me for using a dull blade here because I was cutting through two inch maple, hard rock maple. Now you say, why is this uh, glued up so funny here? Well, first of all, I didn't have any pieces of maple big enough. And uh, so I had to uh, laminate it right here. And then this piece uh, that is uh, glued onto the top will be a portion of the largest part of the cylinder and the rest would just be waste stock so I only glued on there what I thought uh, would be necessary. A lot of thought has to be given to this when you make a pattern uh, before you even uh, begin to uh, make your first chip. Now these two halves, the next thing I'm going to do is drill dowel holes right on the center line and uh, so that they will come apart and uh, actually I'm going to glue the two together first then I will do that. Now in order for these to come apart after uh, the turning has been done I'll lay a sheet of paper in here, regular typing paper and I will put glue on both halves clamp it, let it set overnight then drill those holes and after the whole project is done I'll be able to uh, stick a knife in there and pry the two pieces apart but yet they'll be as one while we do our machining. We'll also need center holes on both ends and I have initially milled some little grooves in there so that when I drill the center hole it will be truly half on one side and half on the other similarly with the other end here. So, and those were laid out very carefully. You've got to think a little bit ahead when you do this. I'm not sure if you'll understand what I'm talking about there, but uh, we'll uh, explain that a little bit more later maybe, if I remember. It's already getting a little bit long here, but stay with me. So I'm going to glue these together and drill those holes and then uh, continue with this tomorrow. Okay, this is all clamped up and held in the vise, and uh, you can see glue squeezing out, and also notice that I have a dowel pin in each end that uh, is helping to align it as, uh, in regards to those little uh, uh, end holes, which will eventually become center holes. So while that's uh, drying, a couple other things I wanted to uh, bring your attention to. All foundry patterns have to have some taper to them. And that's called pattern draft and uh, the reason for that is that the pattern has to be able to pull out of the sand. So this pattern that I made some time ago for a little engine you can see that it's tapered really in every direction that is from the ends and from the sides even some taper here on the little pedestals and taper here and when you turn it over on the back side uh, you can see that it's uh, maybe you can't see but that is all tapered. Everything needs to be smooth so it'll pull out. No undercuts. An undercut is a, is a spot that doesn't have taper. It has negative draft or negative taper on it. And I guarantee you it won't pull, pull out. Or if it does pull out, it'll pull sand out with it. And so uh, you will not like that. Also, all patterns have what we call fillets, which is uh, we round uh, any internal corners. I use... Uh, body putty but there are wax fillets, there's leather fillets, wood fillets but just using body putty and running your finger across there works pretty good. If you don't do that you might get some you do get shrinkage in the corners and sometimes the metal tears and it's unsightly if nothing else. So you set your sanders and your saws. Uh, I always use three degrees. Now I'm using a uh, little uh, die maker square. This is a die maker square, Lufkin, and it can be adjusted so that it's not square and I'm going to hold it up against a 90 degree square here and you can see that uh, there's a difference. So 
I have, uh, there's two adjustments here, one to lock the blade and one to get it uh, off of 90 degrees. So I've set that for three degrees and then uh, that's what I will use to double check my tapers. But uh, generally I will sand them on or saw them on. Now on this particular project that we're doing, it is uh, cylindrical in uh, shape. So naturally a cylinder is going to, or a semi-cylinder is going to pull out of the sand very easily because it is tapered in all directions. Back to this for just a moment. I will also be making uh, a top and a bottom uh, for the cylinder. They're heads, if you will, so uh, they're just uh, very simple to make and uh, I probably won't spend any time talking about them other than right now, but here's a little one that uh, fits one of my smaller engines and uh, you can just see it's a disc and it's got a uh, tapered end on it and uh, the piston rod will move through here and that's basically what we're going to have on the bottom of uh, the, this big cylinder. Real simple to make, probably can make that in 15-20 minutes. The only trick is that you need to have it tapered. If in doubt, use more taper than 3 degrees. You can't have too much. Okay, it's a day later and the glue has dried, so the next thing I'm going to do is to drill the two holes that will be the uh, dowel pin uh, alignment holes uh, between the two halves. And uh, I've got one laid out right there on the center line and one right here, and I'm going to drill a quarter inch on the drill press all the way through the top piece and about a half inch or so into the bottom piece and I've set the depth stop on the drill press to do that. Then I'm also going to open up these holes on the end. Those are the holes that I milled with an eighth inch uh, ball end mill onto each side and I'm going to open that up with a center drill and uh, one end of course is going to be supported in the live center of the lathe when we turn it between centers and the other will be supported uh, or driven in the headstock with uh, a spur center. All right, I've drilled holes that are a little bit uh, deeper than halfway and I'm going to drive some dowel pins in, just wooden dowels, uh, put some glue on them and uh, that way when we turn this on the lathe and these don't go all the way down. These are just enough to plug the hole so that when we turn them that uh, that'll be incorporated into a nice smooth finish. And I did center drill the, the ends. And the next thing I'm going to do is uh, tap the uh, spur center in there with a lead hammer and mark uh, where, uh, where they uh, hit the wood. And I'm going to uh, saw some little crisscross slots so that this will truly drive it. I'll do that on both ends. Then I'm going to set it up in the lathe between the centers and then that's the next step that uh, I'll film and you'll see us get ready to start to turn this thing. One thing that I might do also before I put it in there is there's an awful lot of wood on here and I hate to reduce it all to shavings. It's just an awful lot of work and uh, uh, very tedious. So I'm going to saw off some of this that I know to be waste sock stock on the bandsaw and it'll save me from turning it. Uh, sometimes we even attempt to, to knock the corners off uh, uh, as we're before we turn to uh, make it not so clunky. I don't think I'll try to do that but I am going to take off some of this stock. <laughs> 